camera and I'm just like talking about loss and I'm talking about how confused I am and, and how my hands hurt and I just want to go home but I am home and I'm just... Hey guys, how are you doing? I hope you've all been really, 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 really good. Um, <laughs> welcome back to my channel. This is podcast episode seven now. So exciting. I feel like it's flown by, but at the same time gone really slow. Uh, but if you're new here, my name is Ash, aka Smash, and I am a knitter based in Melbourne, Australia. And I live here with my lovely boyfriend, John, and my cat, Bagel, who's currently sleeping. And I'm sure she's just loving mum yelling at a tiny little camera. Um, but yeah, if you are interested in knitting and stuff like that, feel free to subscribe. Um, I share everything here. I would describe myself as a confident beginner, um, both in knitting and in life. I am very ambitious and sometimes that bites me on the butt, but everyone is here to kind of experience that with me. So yeah, if that interests you, feel free to subscribe. I also have my Instagram, which I have linked down below. I usually give kind of more frequent updates in between when I release my podcast because my podcasts are meant to be like two weeks, every two weeks, but I am really bad at editing. It's that's the problem. Is like I actually film it quite regularly, but the problem is is that I just don't enjoy as much the editing process of it. I feel like oh like why do I want to edit a video when I could just knit? Like that's valuable knitting time for me, and it takes so long to edit these because they are just like a long format video. Um, <clears throat> but. Yes, I do give more regular updates on there. So if you want to check that out as well, everything is linked down below. So I am super, super excited to announce the giveaway winner. It has been running for about a month and all you had to do was, if you missed it, sorry, uh, comment on my last podcast video about like what was your favorite knit of 2023. I really, really enjoyed everyone's comments. Thank you everyone who did participate in the giveaway. It was really fun reading all your comments and seeing what you guys knit. And I did put like some of those into my want to knit pile. So yeah, I really, really appreciate it. So I'm super excited to announce the winner is Erin Heller. Four nine six eight. So that'll be here. Congratulations! You have won this beautiful bag, this project bag full of goodies from Lumen Spindle. You have also won this gorgeous two skeins of this gorgeous hedgehog fiber sock yarn. Um, some cute little uh, what are they called? Stitch markers and a knitting needle gauge. So, so. Congratulations, that's such a good prize. I'm so excited to ship this off to you wherever you are. I am not going to be reaching out to you, but I will be waiting for you to reach out to me. So the details are down below for you to contact me. Um, you can do it uh, like probably most likely through my Instagram DMs. I have followed you on Instagram, so you can DM me. Um, and we can exchange information so that I can send this to you and it can go to a happy home. I'm very excited to see what the, you make with it. So yes, congratulations. Okay, so I hope everyone's been well. I feel like it's just been such a quick January. I don't know where the time has gone. It's just flown by. I feel like I really want to make one of those um, what I plan on knitting in 2024 videos. But I feel like by the time I like compiled all the notes and do everything and, and like allocate yarn to patterns or patterns to yarn, so on and so forth, I feel like it's going to be much. So I don't know if I'm going to release that like or make a video about that. But let me know if you guys would be interested in hearing about what I want to knit for 2024. Um, like this year is the year of size inclusive patterns so i'm very excited to knit only size inclusive patterns i also have if you haven't watched any of my previous podcasts or i have a whole video on size inclusivity if you missed all of that there is a bundle like a ravelry bundle in the description that has a bunch of size inclusive patterns that i like it isn't an exhaustive 
list by any means, but it is just some of the patterns that I found that I think are really, really nice and pretty and um, yeah, a size inclusive. So that's size inclusive, including positive ease. So it's very like, yeah, it's an actual size inclusive list because I get really frustrated when I like when I find patterns and like the, the positive ease doesn't like equal the 60 inch plus size. Anyway, whatever. It's a, it's a tangent. It's a thing. But yes, if you're interested, go take that out. I'm, yeah, I'm just like, I feel like this month has just gone by. I also want to make a little honorable mention to these really, really cute earrings that I currently am wearing. So these are these cute little cloud earrings, which I absolutely, I'm just obsessed with. My boyfriend, John, bought them for me when we went to the Emu Plains Market, which is like a ma maker's craft market. And I just think they're the cutest thing in the entire world. I just think they're so sweet. They're little clouds with little, t like, little raindrops. And they're, like, held onto your ear with, like, a little star stud. I just, I couldn't imagine anything cuter. And I just had to shout them out. Um, their name is Her Hue. Like, hue, like, colour hue. Um, I'll have that link down below as well. They make amazing stuff. And I just, I love earrings. I have a huge collection of crafty handmade earrings that I just love and I just I just had to show these off because they are the most adorable earrings I have in my entire collection so yes let's get into the projects I'm sure that's what you're actually interested in okay so let's get into it the first thing I'm going to talk about is my first finished object of 2024 which is what I'm wearing so I didn't knit this in a month <laughs> I definitely uh carried this over from 2023 into 2024 but um, this is the Eva Cardigan by Petite Knit. I knit this up in Dreamtime Merino 8 ply in the color silver or 2959. And that is an 100% merino wool yarn. And then I held it with Rico Creative Make It Tweed, which is like a lace weight tweed. And that is 35% viscose, 35% acrylic and 30% polyamide. So I held those two together and that kind of gave me more of a like a worsted weight than a DK, like a traditional DK. So because of that I ended up not getting gauge. And I think like one thing you like that is tried and true that we can 100% guarantee is that I will never achieve gauge. Like I, I gauge swatch, I you know change needle size but I pretty much like never get the gauge that I need so I've just learned to adapt and adjust and alter things to fit my needs because I just I don't know maybe I feel like maybe my knitting is just like super inconsistent I don't know but I ended up getting yeah like too few stitches per 10 centimeters than what the pattern required so I ended up going down a size so I usually knit a size 3xl and um, I knit a 2XL. This pattern grows up to a 5XL, but it's not a size inclusive 5XL. So um, if you are wondering why am I featuring this on my video when it's not size inclusive, it's because I started knitting this before I made that change, before I educated myself about what size inclusivity is. So that's why. But any new patterns, anything I'm casting on in 2024 is going to be size inclusive. So, yeah, so this is a really, really soft, like, obviously Merino is going to be very soft, so the Dreamtime Merino that I use is, is, is lovely, and it's soft, and it kind of, I was a bit worried at first before I blocked it that the tweed lace was going to be a bit itchy, but the Merino really softens it up. The cardigan features 2x2 two two ribbing on all of the uh, cuffs and the bottom and the button band and I will insert video of the kind of close-ups of what I'm talking about so you <clears throat> can get a better idea of what it looks like rather than me sitting down here but it is a not a traditional raglan it is like and it's not like a circular yoke either well obviously it's not going to be circular like it's a v-neck 
but it has what's called like a contiguous construction and that's where you knit the way that it works is if I can remember properly is that you're knitting the back panel you're then knitting like picking up stitches on the left and right side knitting the shoulders and then picking up stitches from those kind of little shoulder flaps and then knitting to a, like a kind of like a raglan style from there I don't know if I'm completely explaining that right but you'll see in the video like what it looks like in the back it's a really lovely shaping uh, it creates this beautiful kind of faux seam appearance on the back it looks really nice as well as just the fit around the neck is really comfortable as well um, you pick up stitches for the button band and for the neck and you knit that as one like big continuous strip and that's traditional two by two ribbing as well um the body is just standard stockinette it's um you know knit one back one way uh, and yeah it's knit one way and pearl the other and then you do two by two ribbing on the edge as well now all of the edges are finished with just a normal cast off like a knit and like it's just cast off in rib but it's just like one of those the cast offs where you're just like knitting or purling one and then slipping that previously knit or purl stitch over the next stitch um yeah and that's done on the entire like on all the edges which makes casting off for this really quick and really easy and I actually really enjoyed it and it I always worry that it won't look as nice but it looks really nice and for the especially for the um the button band it gets you to instead of do like knit pearl where appropriate it just says like do a knit cast off and that creates this really nice kind of edging um that's all continuous and it looks super super neat now I you might be saying if you've seen on Instagram or you follow me on Instagram Ashley why are the buttons kind of black uh blacky gray where are those nice kind of orangey buttons well I did a poll on my Instagram asking you guys what buttons I should pick and it was like a choice between these terracotta ones these blue ones and these kind of gray black ones I everyone ended up voting the terracotta ones and at the time I agreed like I 100% wanted everyone to pick those buttons because those were the buttons I wanted to use and so I ended up sewing them on and I don't know when I first saw it I just wasn't in love with it and I just was like mm, I don't know I liked the color but I just felt like the versatility kind of lacked in the jumper those buttons were really really cute but they were kind of giving like kitschy vibes which I don't mind because most of the time I am like kitschy colorful crafty gal but I really wanted this cardigan to be super versatile and I felt like those buttons didn't allow it to be dressed up as much as I would like so I ended up swapping them out for these blacky grey ones all the buttons I got were from a spotlight only because button mania was not open <laughs> on the weekend when I wanted to sew the buttons on this cardigan but I do really like the look of the black buttons either or grey buttons whatever they look a lot nicer I think and they also are slightly larger so they fit the button band a bit more I feel like the red orangey ones were slightly too small and it just kind of looked a bit out of place but yes so I really really like these black buttons now there are like I, I didn't really do any modifications for this pattern other than the length of the body I knit the sleeves to the length required and I uh, knit everything else the same but because I did crop it in the end and make it a lot shorter because I wanted it to be I don't know I wanted it to be able to like wear it with skirts and dresses and stuff so I made it a bit more cropped but I didn't take into account the fact that I obviously had to like space the buttons evenly and because of that I had to place the top button a little bit lower than what petite knit had intended which means that it doesn't gape too much but sometimes the 
the button band kind of like folds over a little bit. I can fix that by just putting a little pin there or even just like putting one of those like hook eyelet kind of things. But it doesn't bother me that much. But that's the only thing that I would note that if you are planning on knitting this cropped, just to like make sure that you're ribbing, like you're making your ribbing in between even so that you can start at the top where it's meant to be. I don't think it really impacts the overall look. I uh, like it's it's not bad at all. But it's just, just something that I was like, at the time when I was first on the buttons, was getting a little frustrated because I was just trying to make it even between each button and not make it look weird because you're meant to have five and I have four because I cropped it. Now, um, the buttonholes I also really enjoyed. They, I don't really, like I've only made a cardigan one other time and I can't remember how I did the buttonholes then, but the buttonholes seemed confusing, but they ended up being quite easy. Um, you don't have to break the yarn at any point. But I was worried when I first finished it that they were going to be a bit tight, but they have loosened over time. So just keep that in note, like keep that in your mind when you do knit the Eva cardigan. If you're worried that your buttonholes are a bit tight, it does stretch a lot. So yeah, I understand why she's like recommends the larger button size. I think my buttons are 28 millimeters wide. The orange ones I had on before were 25 um yeah I I really really I'm really really happy with this cardigan it's exactly what I wanted it to be it sits really well the the shoulder sits slightly off my like the edge of my shoulder which is exactly what it's meant to be the sleeves are really nice like they're they're a nice length I knit them to the length that they that she said in the pattern and they worked out really well um I thought it was too long at the start but they're actually not they're quite fine and it's just super comfy it's warm it's really really lovely I feel like this looks very neat and very professional and very like almost store bought and that's why I love it because it's just it's gray but it's a little bit of pop of color which is totally me um yeah I'm I'm really really happy with this everyone I've showed this to or like has seen this loves it too they think the tweed combination is so cool and I do too I just uh, I'm I'm really really happy I've already worn it to work a few times it's summer here in Australia I will literally I I sweat but I I want to wear my my nets to work so thank god it's air conditioning but as soon as I get out of the office I'm like Ugh. I but it's worth it because I you know I love to wear my knits and I feel like when I'm at home lounging around like eating on the couch I don't want to wear my nice knits and like potentially stain them because I literally drop every bit of food on myself so work, at work is where I get to show them and where I get to wear them the most so yeah I, I really really love it I think this pattern was really clearly written um there was a lot of techniques I hadn't tried before, but it wasn't too challenging because they were explained really clearly. I feel like that's all of Petite Knits, um, all of Petite Knits patterns really are really well written. Um, yeah, they're, they're always really clear and I never have any issues or there's never a point where I, you know, give up and I feel frustrated with her patterns. They are really well written. Um, yeah, I just love everything about this. Now, to get into how much yarn this actually used, I used 11 skeins. I bought 18 because I thought I was going to have to use um, a lot more. Because <laughs> I usually, for a sweater quantity's worth, it's always calculated to be about, mm, you know, around 1600 to 1800 meters of DK weight yarn. Uh, so that's what I calculated for this pattern, but I only used 11 skeins. So I used about a thousand meters, which is really like, I like, that's really, really good. Like I, I didn't expect to, to this, for this to be a thousand meter cardigan. I'm, I'm very, very shocked. So that was about 550 grams and they come in 50 gram balls, the merino. I should be, I should say that I'm talking about the Dreamtime merino. For the Rico Creative Make It Tweet, I used two and a half balls and that was approximately like 1200 meters. Yeah. So 125 grams. So I'm pretty happy with that. Like 
in terms of cost effectiveness, like it, it worked out pretty well. This was like probably around like 150 or 160 dollars for this cardigan, but I think for the look and the feel and the overall finish, I, I'm really happy. The buttons again were from Spotlight, they were like eight dollars, I think. So I'm very, very, very happy with this cardigan, and I can't wait to get a lot more wear out of it. Like, I'm I never want to take it off, <laughs> but then. I'm going to neglect all my other knits, so. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is my Stella quilt cushion. So I've got this in my lovely Patil Knits bag. Oh my god, so cute. I love it. It was in my Lumen Spindle bag, but it outgrew that once I started doing the back panel. So I have done all of the front panel and I'm now doing the back panel. I hope this, oh, I like, oh, why did I do this like this? Okay. This is going to be hard to show you now, but we'll try. Hopefully I don't pull the needles out, but this is, oh, it is going to be weird. Oh, why didn't I put it on stitch, on like on the stitch hole, like bloody hell. Okay. This is what I've got. Okay. I know it looks really weird because it's currently, it's currently on, on the circular needle, but I think it looks really great. I think it came together really, really well. So obviously I'm not finished yet. I'm currently doing the back panel, which is just plain, just plain white. It looks a little funny because I've literally started knitting a row and I don't know why I do this to myself, make my, my job harder. But I, I love how this is coming together. I was really concerned that the colors wouldn't look too great together. Um, because you know, when you have color ideas in your head and then you put them down you're like, Ooh, I don't know about that. I, I do really like how they look. So just to give you a quick recap, if you didn't see my last podcast, this one here is knit picks palette in bluebell. This one here is Sanders gun double Sunday in that orange feeling. This one here is mill post Merino in uh, in green I think I don't know <laughs> I can't remember this one here is uh woolen works DK merino in the color San Fran flowers so they are all different they're all at different gauge I don't care I am off gauge anyway um this pattern is designed to be knit with both DK and worsted weight yarn. I am knitting the DK version, but of course, because I'm off gauge, I, my, is, my cushion cover is much bigger than it's meant to. It's meant to fit a 55 inch cushion cover, um, which is like those Ikea ones. Mine is going to fit more of a 65. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just, my gauge is way bigger and I couldn't be bothered going down a needle size, uh, because yeah, I just, I'm just stubborn, you know, I don't learn. I'm just a stubborn gal. So I'm really loving how this is turning out. I can't wait to finish this. I've, I'm literally 75% finished. Like I only have half of the back panel to do before I am, before I can like shove a pillow in here and seam it up. So the way, also I should probably just like describe it a bit more for you. The way that these little squares are worked is using short rows and um, you pick up stitches to connect them all. So that's, that's how that all works. But yeah, I think it's super effective. I am definitely going to make another one of these, probably not in the same colors, maybe a worsted weight one. So it's a bit quicker because... Um, I really, really like the design. She has two motifs as well in the pattern. So if you don't like this kind of star one, there is a, there is another kind of star one. Um, yeah, it's, it's well written. She, you tell she, like, she put a lot of effort into writing this pattern because it is all laid out pretty clearly. There's diagrams, little charts. There's just like everything for you. <laughs> to know how to do this. It like when you first get the pattern, it does seem like a super overwhelming because there is so much information. But if you just like breathe and just like read through it, it does make sense. Um, yeah, it's definitely great practice if you haven't done short rows or you're like relatively new to short rows. It's really good practice to do short rows because that's all you're doing for this entire thing. Um, 
I also would say that this took, like, this takes a lot longer than I thought it would. Like, I thought this would be, like, quick and easy two-week project. And, yes, I haven't been, like, monogamously knitting on it. Um, but it is taking a lot longer than I thought it was, which is why I just, like, think I'll definitely be doing the worsted one next time. Yeah, it's not, it's not as quick as I thought. It's, it takes a while. Like, I feel like this is taking me the same length of time as a, as a, um, as a sweater. But I think it's totally worth it. And I would say as well, like, if you have made this or you are making this and you're not always, like, in line or getting the right amount of stitches, don't worry. Because, like, on the inside you can, like, fix it all up and <laughs> correct any mistakes. So that was my only kind of uh, with this pattern was that I just felt like all of my squares were like uneven to each other but you can so I would have little gaps and stuff but that was easy to fix up uh from the back so it is salvageable so don't give up <laughs> so that was a really quick one um there wasn't really much to show it's a cushion cover you know it's not entirely complex but the next thing I'm going to show you is something that I just randomly cast on um, I wasn't planning on doing this. I was planning on doing something, but I, I just kind of went for it. I don't know. And that's what's in this little basket here. So my friend, I was about to say her name, but I, she might watch this. So lucky I didn't. My friend crochets. Hope that's vague enough. Um, and she is like the queen of fingerless gloves. She's definitely going to know this is about her. I don't know why I'm trying to hide this, but anyway, she is the queen of fingerless gloves and it's her birthday soon. And so I thought I would knit her a pair of fingerless gloves because she has a lot, yes, but she crochets them all and I thought it would just be nice to gift her something that has been knit and especially because she can appreciate it because she is someone who, you know, dabbles in the fiber arts. She, like she's definitely knit worthy. <clears throat> she also really likes brands. <laughs> And so I thought, oh, great, I'll make her fingerless gloves, I'll knit them, and that'll be brown. And I wanted to make something really nice and soft. So I decided, because I had seen this pattern knit by, like, Craya Bayer or Re Rebecca Klo, um, like, ages ago on one of her, like, earlier podcasts, ever since I've seen it, I've, I've wanted to knit it. So this is the... This would be the School Run Mittens by Laura Penrose. So this is a mitten pattern, like a fingerless glove kind of pattern, where you have like a pico edge on each of the thumb, the fingers and the cuff. It is knit with two strands of fingering held together because you hold the two strands of fingering in the middle and then on the cuffs, you only use one strand of fingering. Now, you'll see that I kind of went through an evolution with these gloves because my first idea was to knit them out of this beautiful, soft heirloom um, alpaca, which is 100% alpaca wool. And it's really, really soft. It's fuzzy. It's gorgeous. It's in this color that's called nougat. Um which is this kind of lovely tweedy, tweedy, um, heathered, heathered beigey brown color. I thought it'd be like, it's nice and light and not dark brown. It, it's just really nice. However, when I first was knitting this up, I came across a few things that were yucking me a bit that I wasn't going to originally deal with, but I just didn't like the overall finished product. So the first thing that I was having an issue with was the cuff. So I was knitting the cuff on double pointed needles because with alpaca yarn, it's just not as stretchy as merino. So I couldn't use my like nine inch circular like I had intended to. Um, so I had to use double pointed needles. And because I was using double pointed needles, I was getting ladders in the cuff. So you can kind of see I hope you can kind of see my horrible, horrible ladders that are in there. They, it's really, really evident, like how messy those stitches are. And of course, because I'm using three needles, it appears three times through the cuff. 
and I just really hated how it looked. I am one of those people who stitch definition is everything for me and if like my my like stitches aren't even it really bothers me. Um, I don't know why but it just really really irks me. So that's kind of why I've never really gone with a lot of um, yarns that have like an uneven spin because I just really like the consistency of like clean looking V's when you knit in stockinette um, and that was really bothering me in the cuff as well as just the overall like stitch definition I, I don't know if you can see that it's just it might look neat to you but to me it's just not as neat as I would have preferred it to be and yeah I just wasn't in love and then as well because I had never done a pico edge before which is relatively simple I found out because it's just yarn overs and knit two togethers which bless I'm so glad it's so much easier than I thought it would be um but at the start well like really at all the cuffs she encourages you to kind of like n attach via knitting to like like you pick up a stitch from the inside and you knit the like you fold over the cuff and you knit it together in a way rather than like sewing it up later I did that on the bottom but didn't do it on the top I ended up sewing it together on the top and it looks neat on the inside but the thing is is that you have to be able to like to kind of make sure that when you're sewing it down that it is like folded over properly because as you can see here I've just created like this weird like gapey I don't know if you do that gapey mouth um where the stitches kind of flare out and I really hate that so <laughs> This first glove was a good experiment. Lucky it takes literally like not even a day, maybe a day max to knit up this much. Um, but yeah, I just was really hating it. So I thought I really need something to kind of make it a little bit more elastic to give the cuff and the, the edge like a bit more integrity. So I was like, oh, look, I have some four ply Dreamtime Merino lying around. Maybe if I use that as like the cuff and I use it, like I hold it with the alpaca because I still want that like soft fluff in the main hand portion, maybe that'll look better. So this is what I've got. So this is Dreamtime Merino uh, in the color natural. And I think this looks so much better. I am really, really loving how that looks. So it's kind of they are two different shades like this is more definitely the merino on the bottom and the top are a bit more pinky than the like you can kind of see here you can kind of see that it's a bit more pinky than the uh, alpaca but held together i think it works out all right but this is way way nicer and i opted to sew both of the cuffs instead of like picking up stitches and connecting them because i think it just allows me a bit more control i really really like this i'll put this on so you can kind of see that it looks really cute i've got stitch markers in there but it's really really cute i love the pico edge i think it looks so nice and it just feels really comfortable and the stitch definition is way nicer. So I'll put these on my hands so you can kind of see together, ooh, too close, the stitch definition. Okay. So I don't know if you can clearly see, But you can see that the stitches on the merino just look a lot neater than the stitches on the alpaca. Like this is a lot more uniform. This is a lot more all over the place. So I feel like the structural integrity just looks so much better and works so much better when the alpaca is held with the DK merino. I also plan on like maybe embroidering some little flowers on here and maybe put her initials or something like that but yeah I feel like this is gonna be really really cute and I hope she really loves them 
I really love them. I want to make myself a pair in the same color, actually, because I just think they're so cute. These stitch markers also are Mavis Castlemaine stitch markers. I'll link them in the below in the below as well. But ah, uh, I am just so obsessed with how cute they look. I think the the little picker edge is so sweet and so effective. Yeah, I really, really like him. And I think, like, with embroidering little flowers on, like, the other side, obviously, I feel like that's going to be really, really sweet. Just add a bit more of a feminine touch and kind of tie in the cuff colours a bit better with the alpaca. Because I feel like it, like, you know, there is still a bit of that contrast. So I think if there's a little bit in between, um, it'll look really well. So that's that one. And now because I was, like, making, I had made these two gloves. And I was like, you know what? I kind of went a pair for myself now what what am I gonna do so I cast on a pair of gloves for myself as well so I'm casting on mine in the uh, this is the Ale of Athena Romulus sock in the color fairy right and this is 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon I don't know I couldn't get that out of my head and this is, oh, I've got a fluff, it's a little feather in there. This is a gorgeous colorway. That's a needle in there, by the way. I'm knitting these on um, the cuffs on 2.5, the Chia Goo 9 inch circulars, 2.5 and 3.5 millimeters, if you were wondering. I always forget to mention my needles. No one really asks, so people are going to use what they want, right? But this is a gorgeous colorway, fairy right? It's so so beautiful. I picked this up at the She's Crafty Market in Castle Main. And I wasn't planning on getting it, but I couldn't leave it there. It's so 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 pretty. And so I decided to cast on my own little glove. I haven't woven in the ends, so don't judge me. But this is my this is my little school run mitten. I haven't booked this either. So if it's looking a bit like odd shaped or a bit tight, that's probably why. Um, but it's so, so cute. Let me put it on for you. <laughs> I, cause it's held two to double as well. Like two to double, two together as well. I feel like you get a really good distribution of color rather than it pulling. And I managed to do a, like a, like a center pull. <gasps> as well as like the outside so I didn't have to like fuss around with winding two balls <gasps> but look how cute look how cute that is they are so sweet I actually oh, I think they're so cute these are also Mavis Castle Main um stitch markers little sheep but I really love them I think the Pico Edge looks so cute I haven't made another one obviously I've got to make its twin um but that gives you a really good idea of how cute these are. I really love the, I really do love the colors. I feel like it's coming up nice and bright on the camera because it is so pretty. And I don't usually, like if I was going to make accessories, I usually was thinking like maybe I'd do plain so they'd be a bit more wearable. But I just feel like this gives the vibe of, you know, in early 2000s rom-coms you know like the holiday Bridget Jones diary where it's like this this kind of like frumpy whatever frumpy disheveled uh like English woman vibes like I feel like that like she like Bridget Jones or um Kate Winslet from the holiday would like put on these gloves and like a scarf and and you know go out into the looking for their love and I just I feel like that gives me that vibe and I'm really into it even though I'm in the middle of summer I'm just like living my winter fantasies really inside with the air conditioning so ah oh, I just love them I can't wait to make another ah, I think they're really cute and they're so so fast and they don't use that much yarn um yeah I feel like I could they would use about 200 meters of a uh, yarn so you could definitely get like four gloves or two pairs out of a normal skein of sock yarn and they knit up so quickly like I knit all three of these and I had a couple nights where I didn't knit at all in a week so if you are looking for a last minute project or something just really quick and satisfying I would recommend the School Run Mitten by Laura Penrose because 
it's really good. It's really fun. Yeah, I'm, I really like it. It's quick. It's a good quick knit. So I'm excited to show you the finished objects when I have them, especially these ones. Once I do that little flower embroidery, I think it's going to be so sweet. Yeah, her birthday's on the 4th of Feb, so I have time still. I have time. I tell myself as I leave things to last minute. We'll see. Check back in next podcast and we'll see if I got them finished in time. Okay, so um, the next thing I have also cast on is also fluffy. Is the... Oh my god, it's all tangled up. Hang on. Is the Aya or Aya scarf by Aya or Aya Knits. Sorry if I'm totally butchering that and mispronouncing it. Um, it's an... Yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm... I'm Australian and we just say things wrong all the time. This is a classic two by two knit scarf. It is a skinny scarf. Again, I'm like living my early 2000s dream. Can you imagine though, like this and this together? <gasps> do they look so cute together? <gasps> they do. Oh my God, I really didn't think. You know, I'm really tempted to also do embroidery. Maybe if I have leftovers of this yarn, I'll do like... <gasps> Maybe it's a little bit of embroidery on the gloves to match the scarf. Am I crazy? Yes, but I love it. Oh, okay. So this yarn, this gorgeous fluffy yarn is Cozy Comfort by Heirloom. This is in the color Venetian Pink 04103. And I got this from Lumen Spindle. I am currently, this is like about one ball, one and a bit balls worth. So I'm about like a quarter of the way through. And the yarn is this beautiful blend of wool, 70% um, wool, 17% silk, and 13% alpaca. So it's got like this lovely fuzz, but it's also like super, super soft. I really love it. This is just really simple. This is just a very simple, easy, mindless knit. The pattern is a paid for pattern. You could figure it out yourself. I paid like five or six dollars but honestly for not having to think of anything it's kind of worth it it's so squishy especially in the two by two rib obviously it looks a bit more scrunched up now because it is like not being not being blocked yet but it's, ideally it's going to be more around that that width but yeah I just think it's so cute I just love the color I don't really knit anything in like dusty pink colors I don't know why. I feel like because I, I kind of try and avoid pinks or peaches or like, what am I talking about? Pinks. I avoid kind of peachy, pink, dusty colors because sometimes I feel like it's too similar to my own skin tone and it's going to look like I'm wearing flesh. But I actually really like this, this peachy pink color. Not peachy pink, dusty pink. What am I saying? Dusty pink color. It's so nice. I really love it. It's just very, very simple. And I'm knitting these on knitting using, what are these? Three millimeter needles, uh, circular needles. These are the tulip, like bamboo twisty ones. I love them. I pretty much use like any short circumference, like 40 centimeter circular needles I'm using are the tulip brand ones. I get them from Lumen Spindle as well. I really like these. I like them because the actual needle itself is short. Um, so it doesn't, it allows for like a lot of flexibility at a small circumference. I bought uh, smaller cables for my normal Lantern Moon needles that I use um, for all of my bigger projects. And because they are about five inches, it just like, it's so, trying to knit in a small circumference is so weird, but these are really, really great. So I, I pretty much exclusively use those for all of my like patterns that require um, 40 inch circular needles. So that's very simple. That's it. That is that scarf. It's really nice. I also have to uh, give credit to my friend, um, Brie, she is the one who inspired me to make a skinny scarf because she made a really nice green skinny scarf that she crocheted and I, I was like, you know what, I'm going to get on the skinny scarf trend. And so that's what's inspired me to make this skinny scarf. 
Okay, so the last thing I'm going to talk about today, I wasn't too sure if I was going to include it just because I haven't like technically cast it on yet. It is still in the swatching phase. So this is the Tolster Tea by Crea Bauer. You would have originally seen me cast this on and knit on it and pretty much almost complete it like <laughs> earlier in the like late to mid last year. And I was doing that in this like creamy cotton alpaca with some like beautiful kind of tonal stripes. I made that way too big. I was off gauge and I just was not happy with how it turned out. So that is in my abandoned whips uh, pile to be frogged. I still haven't frogged it. I keep saying when I frog it, I don't frog it anyway. But I got some beautiful linen yarn from my boyfriend for Christmas. And so I wanted to just show you guys and um, talk about it a little bit. So this gorgeous yellow yarn is from Lumen Spindle because that's the best place to send my boyfriend at Christmas. And this is Rosaria's for Alfalma and it's in the color yellow 29, obviously. It's 100% linen and it is an eight ply. It's kind of like, I would say very light eight ply, even like a heavy fingering. It's gorgeous and it's super, super soft for linen, like actually so, so lovely. Now, originally I wasn't going to make the toaster tea out of this, but I was going to make the Flutterbutt shirt by Jessie Mae Designs and I was going to do it as a 24 hour knit challenge. I did the 24 hours and I did knit in those 24 hours, but I wasn't happy with the video and I wasn't happy with the finished project. It was just chaos. It was chaos all around. It just looked terrible. My gauge was like totally off. It was just like, it was just bad. So I, I did end up making a bit of it, but I just wasn't happy with how it was looking. And like I said before, when my stitch, like when my stitches are like so uneven, it freaking bothers the heck out of me. So... I am going to frog this and I have started swatching for the toaster tee. So this is just a plain stockinette stitch, but you can see already on the smaller needles because I'm knitting the fingering version. It just looks so much nicer, so neater. It just feels better. Everything about it is just better. So I'm just knitting a swatch in the round because I want to definitely make sure that I am getting the right gauge. I have literally just lost the stitch. There we go. Getting the right gauge. But there's really just not much to show you other than I love this yellow one. Like, you love this yellow... Oh my god, that's really hard to say. Love this yellow yarn. God, that's hard. Try saying that three times. Um, love this yellow yarn. Love this yellow yarn. Love this jelly. Well, I, well, well, well. No, it's hard. I can't do it. Um, but yeah, it's really, really beautiful. I'm so excited to show how this turns out. And again, like I'm just on this embroidery kick. Um, my plan is to make the toaster tea and then embroider little yellow flowers <laughs> into it as well. But obviously I'm not that far along. So don't hold me to that because I don't know how. I don't know if that'll ever come to fruition, but it is on my uh, 2024 knitting goals so yes oh uh, yeah I know some of you will probably be like Ashley I want to see the 24 hour knit challenge trust me you don't at the time I had started watching Lost like I literally started watching Lost at the same time as filming it and as the hours go by and I watch more Lost and I get more tired and the more Red Bull cans get emptied I just like end up just diving more and more into this like crazy like just kind of mentally unwell just spiral of chaos and it's it's not good it's it's not good I just like I look harrowed I'm like getting so close to the camera every time like every time I check in I'm getting like closer and closer to the camera and I'm just like talking about loss and I'm talking about how confused I am and and how my hands hurt and I just want to go home but I am home and I'm just like it's just not good so that probably will never see the light of day but it's glad to know that I I could do something but oh my god 
I would recommend doing a 24 hour knit challenge. I couldn't knit for like a week after because my hands hurt so much. But one thing that I did learn from it was that this linen yarn is very, very, very soft. Like considering I had been knitting for so long, it, it, it wasn't like, it should have given me rope burn, but it was so, so nice. And it was so soft that I was, I know, like I, I'm really, really, really impressed with this. So if you did, were looking for like a nice soft linen yarn, I think this is really great. Okay, so that is everything I have to talk about and share with you. Thanks so much for sticking around. If you want to see more of my content and more of my videos, feel free to subscribe as well as give this video a like. It really helps me. And I also have my Instagram linked down below. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I will see you guys soon. So take care. Bye.